edition of Fabric Friday. We're going to start off on this technical series of the Fabric Friday with the Lake House. So the Lake House on Microsoft Fabric is the foundation to every data orchestration project, data architecture project, data injection project that you want to have within your Microsoft Fabric. So it starts really with the Lake House. So you can imagine Lake House as that platform where you can architect data, you can orchestrate data, you can ingest data, right? And then create um, your code base, which could consist of your PySpark or traditionally write, writing your Python script within the same Lake House. So we start first with the Lake House. And of course, to keep a perfect, you know, environment for you to develop your app, and I mean to create your project, you obviously will know that you need to create to how do we access Lake House within the Microsoft Fabric. So to access your Lake House, you need to log on to your Microsoft Power BI account within your organization. So if I go on to powerbi.com or you go on to your office.com, sign into your office within your organization tenant, and then go to your hub launcher and select select your Microsoft Power BI from that environment, or just go on to Power BI service, which is powerbi.com log into your powerbi.com and within your powerbi.com once you sign in you first as i said you need to create a workspace create a workspace and from the workspace you then be able to follow on from here your workspace so if i go on to my workspaces and i click create a new workspace that allows you to be able to create a new workspace so i just created a new workspace right called the fabric friday lake house so within your microsoft Power BI environment, which is the single platform to access all the various fabric applications. I mean, all the various fabric fabric workload. So if I, by default, you should have a Power BI. So within the Power BI app, when I click on that and I choose data engineering, this is where the journey, you know, this is where it starts. So if I come to choose the workspace, right which is the default workspace that i'm currently selected and i go on to lake house and now i want to set a new lake house so i'm going to create a new lake house i'm going to call this fabric friday first lake house okay well this is going to be created we're going to create a new lake house and i'm going to show you the various processes with respect to orchestrating my data. All right, so it's currently loading the created, the newly created lake house. And now, as you can see, the lake house has been created. So right now we've got on this lake house, I've got four different entities of what you can do. You can start a new data flow gen, gen two uh, for, your, for, your, for your database. I can start or create a new data pipeline. I can also create to work within an existing pipeline, I can create or open a new workbook or a notebook rather, which will typically consist of your data science um, notebook, you know, or what you can call the your uh, your Jupyter notebook within the Microsoft Fabric environment. All right, so what you will see on the Explorer, of course, at this side, you'll find the tables, all right, you'll find the files. So I'm gonna go ahead now to orchestrate and get data into my files. So if you go to the files, there's a, there's a more option here and there is a upload button. So let's upload files. It'll go to file and I would browse to my system. Okay.
install that data set um, and pretty much of course be rest assured that you can write all your python functions or your write or your python scripts your PySpark code as well uh, by default right what you get that you can write is a PySpark. so if you want to go to your traditional um you know spark for data engineers you can choose you know i can choose my so you have the opportunity to write your your, your native language whether entirely you your your, you write you're very familiar or accustomed to writing your spark you can choose your scala your scalar and then if you want to also write your sql you can choose or switch your language to your sql as it were so you have the opportunity to switch to any of your preferred data engineering language um as it were so let me show us quickly how we can load the same table that we have working with within the files, we're working within the file presently, as you know, how do we load that same file into our data table so that it can become a one data table, all right, for the purpose of creating my querying within the table. So if I go back to my pies back, all right, and um, we look at the, we look at the files that we have, which is this file, and I come to the more option, and I say load to table and I give it a table name. So I'm just going to keep sample under subscriber so and I click load. And we'll wait for the data to be loaded or converted into a data table created. This is a one table, all right, um, that is uh, created for you. And of course, what happens here is that we have a you know the table so if i click on the table it's going to preview that table and you will see that we would have just i've just created that table this is what the table showing the top 1000 records this is what it looks like if i navigate to the table and if you want to look at the properties of the table you can always go to the properties and you will see that what was actually created of that particular file is called the delta table all right, so the format, yes, it's not your traditional, you know, table that you have on your database. It, this is like an abstraction of that. So if I want to ingest the same table into my notebook, let's go back to our notebook, which is notebook one. And if I come, come out to the table, you can just simply refresh. If it's not reflecting on the table yet, refresh. so within this table okay i can now click on the table now you see that it's been added so if i come to a new code block all right and i say go to load data and i say spark that automatically loads that data into your table and what it means the benefit that comes with this is that you now can write your query all right, entirely using SQL uh, query or your, SQ, your SQL, right? So you can write your SQL queries to query information from your data. So for instance, let's say we're looking at this table. I'm selecting and I can now say, um, you know, I can then write your, your SQL query to query information for you. So let's first run this query and see what happens from the top 1000 records. So the top 1000 records, which is a limit 1000, is currently being fetched from a delta table. Voila. Okay. So what you have in addition to, I mean, to this is that you can now see your chat, you know, you can see your data in chat. So I can see that there are, you know, four different ship mode. I have the ship. I have the first class, I have the same day, I have the second class, and I have the, you know, um, standard class. And on top of that, you can also modify what is currently shown in the default chart. And I, to do that, if I come to view options, and within the view options, I can change my key, which is the category. The key is like the category. So I want to choose the, um, let's look at the sales by segment. So key is, seg is segment. The values that I want to see would then be what? The sales. So I want to check the postal code, apply this, and I want to see this 
in bar charts okay so this is where you choose the charts type and if i click on apply this will show you you know this record for the top 1000 let us quickly explore how we can traditionally write our sql query you know to relate to the table which is the delta table that we have within uh lake, lake house because of course what you will notice is that you know so look at this query for instance if i write this query which is typically to select all the segments the country the quantity the profit from the superstore table at any point where the profit is less than zero so in this case i'm interested in seeing all the records that are you know um that are lost lost sales within our transaction table so but what you get from writing this query all right is that you get an invalid syntax because remember currently writing what we've defined to write in this case is what our PySpark python so this is not a valid python query or code so we need to write you know on top of a sql environment within lakehouse so to do that just navigate to the lakehouse you've created if we navigate to the lakehouse that we just created which is here we have the explorer here and what you would notice right at the top right hand side of my screen is that the current environment is on lake house endpoint so if i toggle or click on that option and i switch to sql endpoints this automatically loads an SPS, a sql endpoint within your fabric lake house so what you would then realize now is that if i come back so new sql query right you then can query directly your database so let's say we want to create um as the same query let's say we want to select we we'll select what are what are we selecting we want to select the segment we see that segment we want to select the country the country we want to select the quantity we want to select the profit and perhaps maybe the sales okay from so we select that from where from the table name of the table is sample superstore and then we're going to add our where clause we're going to say where where profit is less than zero okay and we terminate that query um from there so the moment you terminate the query i will click on run let's wait for the query to be executed so it's currently starting to run the query and as you can see the time it, it took it to run this query was what was eight seconds 756 milliseconds so what we see now is we see all the sales points right that the result are um, lost sales okay so we have all the lost sales sales points in this particular database uh, delta table okay so and bear in mind that you can also write you know as many logic as possible so what you will see right now is that if you go on to look at the information schema there within information schema you see all the views you know within your schema which can show you the various constraints the various um you know tables the cons the constraint the primary keys and everything which is typical of every relational database management system so you have the opportunity to write your query to write your aggregation function or any of the queries that you intend to write within this environment okay if you also have you know, perhaps less technical and you want to be able to you know visibly write your query all right you can click on new visual tool so within a new visual tool let's look at how we can build this table so or build this query so let's say we have within a table if I expand on the table build rather so i want to be able to build this sales so i'll just drag the table and drop it within this environment so the table is going to load by just dragging the name of the table so now we have this table the question then is what do we intend to see in this table let's manage our colon to choose colon i'm interested in looking at the the sec i'm interested in looking at the products category by 
profit. Okay, I want to look at the profit by product category. I click on OK. So now we have a profit, you know, and um, we have the category. So what happens is that we can visualize the result. I click on visualize report that automatically creates a visual, you know, element out of the result of our query. So we're just going to wait a bit for us to fetch that record for you directly onto your Power BI within your lake house. Okay, so if I come back to expand this visual query, I can select the profit the category by profit, and I decide to you know to check this, you know, by any chart. So if I'm looking at it as let's look at this as a you know stack bar chart, you get to see that if I want to view the same result. You know, let's view the same result as a donor chart. Get to see that result as a donor chart. And we can save that report right on from here. You see now that I do not necessarily need to, you know, work within my traditional I, you know, Power BI desktop again, because we can create all the report directly on top of our leak out this is the benefit that comes with extreme capabilities of analytics within lake house so the report can be shared or saved and then this would mark the end of this week's edition on fabric friday join me again next week as we explore other capabilities and features that comes with microsoft fabric see you until then